TGR. What is up, everyone? It's Rudy. And on the other side of the world, we got your boy Onyx. Ciao. Oh man, I love it. Sorry, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. No, every time it's got to be every time. Oh, sorry, every time. Yeah. I feel like what's his name, Lightning McQueen, when he was like, "Ciao, ciao." <laughs> oh man that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> um i uh dude what a freaking week man it's been a week things what just a... are looking brighter quote unquote <laughs> for this global pandemic but hey we're, we're we're thriving i guess yeah i mean we're thriving we at least got you know our copy of some games and stuff like oh, that my which God. is like amazing Final fantasy 7 finally finally i got to play a stupid game <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, d dude, honestly, I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But um, speaking of, you know, Final Fantasy and Sony and whatnot, um, Bloomberg, <laughs> you, you like this transition? <laughs> I, I love it. I'm like, I don't think we mentioned Sony, but screw it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll run with it. Um, <laughs> so Sony went ahead and, uh, well, somebody in Sony talked to somebody at Bloomberg, and Bloomberg posted this article this morning. Uh, it's titled, A Sony Plans Limited PlayStation five output in first year and it's so interesting because the way that i see it i mean first off they start talking about pricing and for those that paid attention to the weekly resume a few weeks ago um bloomberg also posted another article talking about uh the projections in regards to how much it costs to produce it and they were saying mm -hmm. that it was going to be like 470 bucks right yeah yeah, yeah. so like now an insider is saying, well, you know, Sony's struggling to kind of like, you know, see what they can do. But game developers who've been creating the games for this PlayStation is anticipating the price is going to be within the region of like $499 to $549. That's and that's, crazy. dude, it's freaking nuts, man. Like, it, I mean, I expected it to be like $499. But yeah. if it goes over that, that's kind of like. I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, we know this thing is, this, this box is going to be a beast. It's going to have some really, really strong components that you know uh, special ssd they're having developed all, all that stuff is expensive and it makes me wonder you know how much of a loss we're willing to take you know so at, oh, at yeah. 500 bucks like 500 bucks seems to be like the the reasonable price point where it's like okay this is obviously next gen things are getting more expensive but it's still i mean it's a hundred dollars more than the ps4 pro so i, I don't know Oh man, I, I'm right there with you. I'm because I the way that Xbox came out, you know, pretty much guns blazing. I knew that it was going to be minimum 500 bucks. Like right. the, the Xbox, even with the, the One X, X, sounds crazy expensive. I don't know. Right. I don't know why. Dude, it's just, it just like sounds like such a beast. And like the Xbox One X, they were like out the gate. They're just like, we're not going to mess around with that $400 price point where we know we're more expensive, but we're also more powerful. We give mm -hmm. you actual 4K. Right, um, native 4K, yeah, not none of that checkerboard stuff. Exactly, and now that like the way that things are looking for next gen, I'm kind of like, all right, you know, if 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 this article is saying that you know developers are saying that it's going to be 499 to 549, then what can Xbox you know be like? I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of like, yeah, it's I, probably going to be around the same price point. They can't. I mean, if Microsoft believes they can price their machine at 600 dollars and sell well that's that's not a good idea we we saw how the ps3 fared that the first like two years was exactly man it, was, it was not good at all so i mean i don't know there's there's also other things in in the article um like one of the things that they said was that um the whole pandemic has affected sony's promotional plans on things in right. order to like promote the ps5 and everything like that but one thing that they did say is that the production capacity has not been affected by it um, but they, because of that increased price point, they're going to go ahead and, and assume that they're going to sell less consoles. So they're making less. That's which... really interesting. That's very interesting. It's, it's almost taking like a, like a humble, you know what? We're probably not going to sell as many PS4s as we did during the first quarter of that year. So let's, yeah, let's not, <laughs> let's not make as many. <laughs> Makes sense. And also didn't even mention something about, um, parts being scarce like gpus i think it was or something like that yeah i mean they were they were having um issues in regards to um are, well are you talking about this article or the previous yeah, one that article yeah um i don't know 100 percent. i thought i read something about parts parts scarcity that might actually be one of the reasons why um 
the pr something about the price. Maybe I'm, I'm remembering incorrectly, but. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, I remember seeing that, you know, they were saying that, you know, to run in the parts uh, because of, you know, everything that's going on that, you know, it's not going to be an, a crazy, you know, amount that they're going to be able to produce because of that. Right. But I mean, I don't know. At this point, it, there's there's so many things that are up in the air in regards to this pandemic that right. you kind of it, it's hard to, to to predict what's going to happen. Um, I know. I know that they've said that it's hard for um, Sony execs and things like that to go ahead and go out there to China in order to make sure that everything's, you know, being assembled correctly and that they're uh, essentially making sure that the quality is on par to, to what they're used to. So I don't know, right. man. I don't know. It, it's it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I, it, I, it, I mean, we live in un unprecedented times right now. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a very, oh, yeah. very unfortunate time of, uh, of for next gen releases. You know, we were this was gonna be the year we all thought 2020, baby. You know, <laughs> new year, new me. You know, new generation of consoles. <laughs> I mean, all this good stuff, and and now we're here. So, oh man, but you know, it, we'll we'll take it. You know, we'll see what happens. I know yeah. that there's gonna be you know the the IGN thing that they're gonna do in the middle of summer. Um, so we'll see i'm hoping i'm hoping that like summer of gaming will will not 100 percent replace e3 and and i know it's kind of off topic but i i hope that you know it still lets developers and publishers like showcase what's over the horizon in regards to gaming yeah. man no yeah yeah definitely. I'm, I'm i'm hoping i mean it, and it's funny i was actually going to ask you today what day <laughs> that summer of gaming was because i like i had requested from my job you know the days off for e3 but that's no longer a thing so i have to kind of can't you know change that around because yeah. i i mean it's, it's just all it's all a hot mess man but <laughs> hey that you know speaking of e3 and conferences that's not the only thing that uh, has been you know postponed and or canceled am i right yeah 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 no that that's a, such a beautiful segue Onyx. <laughs> i kind of forced it a little bit at the end there but whatever <laughs> no, no it's all it's all good it's all good um one of the other um larger conferences gamescom is by far one of the biggest conferences uh, i'd say out it's the second well. biggest honestly uh, yeah man E3. i mean if e3 was in europe it would be gamescom uh, yeah. that's for sure and yeah. uh you know they they publicly announced today that they are you know they're canceling the actual physical um uh, meetup and everything like that they're refunding everything uh to the people that had already purchased tickets uh instead what they're doing is they're having a digital uh event so to speak uh, i don't know how exactly this is going to be pulled off i don't know right because they they're pretty much like you know we're gonna have more information in the next few weeks um which i i applaud them for that man like it, it's it's a mature responsible thing they're they're and this is typically like in august like late august yeah and they're just like we're, we're not playing games we're we're just gonna go ahead and and cut it you know just cancel it yeah well not yeah. cancel it but change the format right do this digital event and and i think to to kind of you know i guess imagine to your question and how how it's gonna work I can literally see Gamescom because Gamescom, you know, it's an entity, right? It's an entity that is handled by, I'm not sure who, who the corporation is behind them, but, you know, E3 is by, you know, the ESA handles E3 here in the States. Mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, I'm not sure what the commission or, or the company name is, but uh, I can imagine the Gamescom, you know, whoever runs it could just pretty much reach out to the, the publishers and the developers and say, all right, guys, whatever you had planned to show, you know, let's just let's put a big old video together. Let's just call it the Gamescom digital event, which is like an hour or two hours or whatever, and just mm -hmm. throw out the trailers. Who knows? Maybe, maybe that would actually work better. Because if I remember correctly, the Gamescom, besides Microsoft, it didn't really have any other conferences, right? Um, I well, I mean, they had the um, what was it? The whole Death Stranding thing um, last year, and I'm just yeah. talking last year. Like, aside from Microsoft, the the other presentations that were there were very um they're, they weren't as, as large if i right, remember like it's, correctly it's, gamescom is more of a trade show where you go in there you try out the games you see stuff it's not like e3 where it's like i mean yes it is also a giant commercial but e3 has more of that bombast of that yo yeah you're, you're coming here to see trailers mm -hmm. fun reveals etc etc versus mm -hmm. where gamescom to me feels like yeah you're gonna get that too but there's a, a more emphasis on developers coming out and showing the games right like you have I remember uh, last year before Panzer Dragoon came out, like they had the demo stations there, you yeah. know. So a, a lot of like developers will go out there and, and, and demo out their games. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Like I, I remember um, somebody. I forgot who it was, man. And I, and I feel bad for forgetting. But somebody like uh, PM'd us on Twitter, and they were like, "Hey, yes. do you guys want to go over to our booth? Blah blah blah. We would love You're to have so you. Right. Just schedule a slot and everything." Because I was I was in Poland, so I was like, "Yeah, sweet. That'd be awesome if if I had the time." And it, you know, just things didn't work out, and then. Sorry. Uh, you're good, man. And then uh, Panzer Dragoon World, like, he was like, dude, are you going to go? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, oh, man, I, yeah, <laughs> I would yeah, love yeah, to, I but I can't. That, um, yeah. But I loved it because he was, like, recording himself. Like, and he, I think he drove from France straight into Cologne. Uh-huh. And, like, I was like, dude, wow. But, um, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I wanted to go, but, you know, I couldn't. Um, but, no, that's that's definitely something that I see more of, like, an, an expo setup where there's, like, different booths and you can kind of, like, go in and, uh, you know, try things out. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know if you need to schedule things or not because I know E3, you know, you have your, your journalists and your press passes and then you have kind of, like, your gamer passes where, like, the general public can come in and it's just a different um, layout on things in regards to what you have access to and what you don't and how you get yeah. around and whatnot. So... I'm intrigued, that's for sure, to see. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, everything is going to be digital this year, right? I mean, the, the summer, the gaming event, the summer gaming event for uh, IGN, it's obviously going to be digital, and Nintendo, I don't know how it's going to work. Nintendo has always done stuff digitally, so it really doesn't matter at this point. Not always, right. they, you know, obviously stopped going to E3, and, and um, or having conferences at E3. I can't even talk today, man, it's... <laughs> been a long day (laughs) but you get what i'm trying to say right you know oh uh, yeah these companies are moving now to digital uh, events i mean state of play right inside xbox Mm -hmm. obviously nintendo directs so we'll see you know the the, whatever happens after this pandemic goes away um i think the gaming landscape in terms of how they presented things is going to be different because oh yeah a lot of companies and i I guarantee you i I know microsoft is all about the e3 but they're gonna say oh my god wait a second we saved a lot of money this year by (laughs) by not having this giant ass conference and just doing a digital event i I, i'm telling you it's 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 gonna change things maybe not radically maybe not you know everyone but i think conference are gonna be a little bit more uh more rare yeah, I mean, I, I it's a shame because I, I think that there should be like a culmination of like everything that's going on, have it in one place and kind of have like this amazing experience where, you know, everybody is there. All eyes are there all in the same location. But, you know, that that's that's just me. Like, uh, no, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I enjoyed E3, right? I mean, we all yeah. we all really like E3. That's one of our most fun. It, it's gamer holiday, right? That's what they call it. Gamer holidays It's where we go oh, yeah. out there and. Game of Christmas, right? Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. The, the thing is, though, you know, I, I've always had certain issues with E3, right? There's a lot right. of fluff. There's a lot like, oh, yeah. we look at these conferences and we get one, you know, Microsoft 2018 conference once every couple of years. Right. That doesn't happen yeah. very often. Like, that was probably the best conference since maybe the 2015 conference yeah. where, uh, where Sony, you know, the, the, the Year of Dreams, right? Yeah. Which uh, out of those, <laughs> most of those games were, uh, you know, not not as good as it could have been, except remake. Remake <laughs> finally came out and it's a good game, but oh, we're getting off man. a whole different tangent. My, my point uh, was that there was a lot of fluff, and hopefully with the digital events, there will be less fluff and more emphasis on the games. Yeah, there's more. There's gonna be more meat there. It's gonna be you know less BS, so to speak. But um, I while you were talking, uh, I did a quick Google search, and there is going to be the Steam Games Festival, which is going to be uh, a digital event, by the way. That's gonna be from June 9th to the 14th, oh. and it's gonna be directly from the Steam Launcher. So I am assuming that Weird. the summer of gaming might coincide a little bit with that. Just to kind of, you know, hey, by the way, this is available now and you can try it out here and blah, 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 blah. Oh, man, I would love to to get like gaming demos. Yeah, that, that's that's essentially oh, what uh, oh, uh, Jeff yes. uh, Keeley was talking about during the Game Awards. He was like, this is what the future should be instead of having, you know, these conferences where you have to like pay to go all the way out there just to try a demo for 15 minutes. Why not go ahead and have it on Steam or whatever it may be, whatever platform, and you can try out these games before they're actually out in the public and you can go ahead and play them firsthand for a limited amount of time, you know? So uh, we'll we'll see we'll see. I mean I don't know. That, That'd that's... be great. That would be a great way for you know like 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 we've talked before. E three, uh, you know not now that it's open to the public or has been for the last couple of years, it would make sense. You know maybe buy a twenty dollar digital pass where you can access the games that would be there. You know with demos and stuff. I, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. I'm okay with that. 
I'm, I'm yeah. what, what you just said at like twenty dollars to go in and just like try out the demos for all these different things i'm i'm totally cool with that just to like if see they, what's if they there. were to do that man like i'm telling you the landscape is gonna change that's huge but yeah we'll yeah. see we, we don't know exactly what's gonna happen yet, so. well you know um ign posted uh Oh, I think it was on the 13th or the 12th or 13th about more information in regards to the digital event. And, you know, that Steam info is there. And uh, I think you're going to, it says for 48 hours, players could be turned, could try limited time demos of games, including System Shock and Skatebird. So, you know, the, the, the landscape is there in regards to, or the possibility is there uh, right. for that, for that to happen and whatnot. So I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping for the best. Let, let's just say that. Right, right. No, me too. We'll see what yeah. happens. We'll see. We'll see. Um, th but this morning I did wake up to, I don't know if this is like sad news or, or happy news. or. I think it's good news. I, I, I think it's it's good news too. Um, and uh, so Jason Schreier, who I, I follow a lot on Twitter, like he's one of the few Twitter accounts that I have like a notification turned on. So whenever he tweets anything, I see it. And it's just because he, at least for me, and I'm, I'm sure you agree with me too, um, he's one of the the solid voices of, of reason and trust in Kotaku uh, today. Oh, yeah. And um, he said, he tweeted uh, earlier today, he said, some news after eight years and some change, I am leaving Kotaku. I'm taking a few weeks off to finish up my book and hang out with my daughter, then starting a new job reporting on video games at another outlet. I wrote one last thing to say goodbye, and he links to his press sneak out. Um, I, I, <laughs> I think, I think you're the one that said that uh, you hope that he doesn't go to IGN. Uh, yeah, I mean, don't <laughs> get me wrong. You know, I, I don't, I'm not gonna say IGN is like a, a terrible publication, um, but they not. have their questionable things. And uh, agreed. I mean, you know. I don't know. I, I just never forget. Like they, they used to. I used to feel like their their reviews were more generous than they should be. Um, but I then agree. they have like people that are so nitpicky that you get too much water. I know that's meme issue <laughs> at this point, right? That's a meme, really. But it is still, you know, like they, you know, or the God Hand review from way back in the day, where like this reviewer like hated God Hand, the game that's really pretty good actually. Yeah. Um, and then like gave Nintendo is like a nine out of ten, and it's like really you gave God Hand a two point five or some crap. Yeah, it's, I mean it's it's an old again it's meme ish at this point, but it still stands that uh, that test of time where it's like I don't know for some reason I just I never really liked IGN like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I mean honestly, Jason Schreier, 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 whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, You're good. He was the best part of Kotaku for a while. I mean, agreed. When um, I forget what there was, Brian Ashcraft, and there was another Brian Totillo. No, that's Steven. No, Tutillo. that's Steven Totillo. Brian Crescente. Brian yeah, Crescente. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, yeah, is, this is old school Kotaku, old school. man. But that um, Brian, wasn't Brian Crescente in in Japan. He did. Yeah, he did yeah, live yeah. in Japan. Um, and I think he ended up either going to Polygon or The Verge, maybe. I forget where he went to. Yeah. But after that, I just, I don't know. It started changing when Gawker changed the whole thing, like, yep. with how ads started working. I just really stopped going to Kotaku. Yep. And, um, you know, Kotaku was always kind of made fun of anyway as slow Taku. They were really slow with their news. Yeah. And, you know, because being part of Gawker, they had a lot of uh, editorial freedom. So we did get a lot of, like, I mean, I... I for the lack of a better term, crappy articles, right? Kind of random articles. Yeah, That's yeah. not a bad thing. It's okay to no. have sometimes good articles, but then like, I'll never forget. They did an article about sex and like, it was just so weird. And they used like pictures of underage characters in sexual situations. And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Totillo what? has to come out there and be like, all right, guys, we're sorry. We edited this, this article. Cause uh, yeah, we, I, I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> what? So it was like, yeah, yeah. It was wild. This happened like a year or two ago. And I was just like, what the hell's going on with Kotaku? <laughs> um, but honestly with, with, with Jason out of Kotaku, I, 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 I don't think I have much of a reason to go to the website anymore. Totillo is the only one that's pieces. left, dude. And he's just the editor. He doesn't really write articles. No. So I, I'm just, I, I'm done. I mean, you know, it, it, I don't know. I'll follow Jason wherever he goes. I'll definitely oh, follow yeah, him. Man. I'll always read his articles and stuff. Yeah, but... he's a good guy. He's a good guy. 
Um, yeah, talk about. He's hoping you still get those uh, those insider tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he will, man. Uh, like, you know, it, it's what is it like? A reporter never reveals his sources or whatever. So yeah, it's yeah. always like having a, that trust or whatever. So I don't know. Oh, yeah. uh, so and he's definitely made a name for himself in the industry. Oh, so yeah. I'm sure wherever yeah. he goes, he's gonna be fine. Even if it's IGN, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, as long as they give him the freedom to write the pieces he needs to because Correct. like he said in his in his uh farewell uh piece he said that that's one thing that he will always love about kotaku was that he, he never was told don't write this because you will piss off publishers that's right. my biggest fear if you were to move to ig freaking end you know yeah. I, I feel like it's just gonna be there's less of a you know of that freedom i would imagine with I agree. that being part of such a big network mm -hmm. that's just me no man i i'm right there with you that's a, that's one thing like and it's such a like delicate um like and this goes more towards like just press in general like you don't want to piss off quote unquote like your sponsors or whatever it may be and in this case you know it's a, a video game publisher being like well you know you gave us a, a crappy review last time so screw you you're not getting a review copy and it's just mundane it's like yeah but that's dude, the thing. i don't even think it's review things it's more so like hey i'm gonna write an article on on frigging crunch and how people are dying at your studio or i'm gonna write about like how awful they're being treated it's stuff like that that he was writing about that yeah you know other other companies might be like oh no 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 you can't say that about rockstar bro you know and it's like <laughs> no no we have to talk about this because if nobody talks about it nothing's gonna get done Agreed. people are still gonna be abused and, and that's that's one thing like again i'm getting off of a tangent here but i really do want to say this like you're good you're good with gaming I feel like a lot of gamers, because they're such passionate fans, it's so easy to just give us, like, just give the, uh, what's it called? Like, just turn your nose, you know? Like, look at things and say, oh, yeah, you know, but it's part of the culture. Like, I always hear that shit when we talk, when we talk about Poland, when we talk about Japan. It's like, oh, yeah, Crunch is, it's okay, because it's part of their culture. And it's like, I don't, I don't give a shit if it's part of a culture. What if rape was part of a culture? I mean, again, this is a very extreme example, but yeah. you, you still wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, no, it's cool. You know, like, no, you know, at, at some point it was part of our culture to get married at 14 and 15. Right. But we don't do that anymore. Right. We don't think a 15 year old, you know, should get married with a 20 year old because that, that's kind of weird and creepy. Right. Yeah. So so wh why why do we why is it so easy for us to look at these things and say, you know what? It's cool. It, it, it's part of the culture. You got to respect it. It's like, no, no, you really don't. You really, really don't. <laughs> so I don't know. Anyway, off that tangent, <laughs> Jason, con <laughs> I, 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 congratulations. I hope congrats, uh, you know, wherever you go, we will definitely follow you and continue your awesome journalism because it, it is one of the very, very uh, few that is very, very good. Yeah, I, I agree, man. It's, it's one of those things that I look up to every single time that I see a tweet. I'm just like, oh, is there something cool? Is there something new? Like, what's happening? <laughs> right. You're like, I, I messaged you last night. I was like, oh, something's happening tomorrow. Let's see I what know. it is. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? People were like freaking out. They're like, oh, man, what's happening? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I mean, this, this is worth it. This is worth it. In my opinion. I think so. I agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it's just it's it's been a, a crazy week. And, and these are like the, the three things that happen literally today yeah. everything all this this isn't even like a weekly resume at this point no. it's just a daily resume <laughs> daily, daily resume i mean i i highly doubt that tomorrow we're gonna get anything crazy like this i mean i could be totally wrong no. but I as mean, of now knows? i don't I, I don't expect much to come down tomorrow you know? no 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 this was the week all compact into one day it was insane it was insane <laughs> <laughs> into one day dude yep You're sorry, oh man. man well um for those of you that are that are still listening and still enjoying this thank you so much <laughs> give us yes, a please. thumbs up thank you. <laughs> and uh if you haven't subscribed subscribe to this channel and uh join our discord man we, we talk yes. about random crap in there all yes. the time yeah, we all the time great. We, we, we open our gates to our Animal Crossing New Horizons Islands all the time <laughs> and uh, share recipes and, and random stuff that we buy at Nook's Cranny. So uh, join in. But uh, aside from that, man, um, I guess that, that would be it for the next time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, guys, hey, we're chill. So like, comment, subscribe and do all that nonsense because if we don't see it, bell. you know, I'm sure YouTube is like, oh, they don't, they don't see it. But screw them. <laughs> yeah, screw them. <laughs> Take them out of the algorithm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. But thanks for thanks for listening, guys. I uh, I appreciate you all. We we always love you. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll catch you on the next one. All right, we'll see you on the next one, guys. Deuces. Later. Hope you enjoyed the video. 
If you want to see more and stay up to date, subscribe, hit the little bell, and join our Discord. If you want to support the channel, please check out our Patreon or hit the join button below. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.